Man, here we go, Central. I am fired up that you are here, that you're here watching us online. I want to give a special shout out to Creston and our Creston campus for what God's going to be doing for you guys this weekend. I know that there's, a, uh, there's purpose, uh, there's hope. I know you guys are driven to, to reach the community in Creston, and so we're excited about that. First and foremost, I want to say to all the fathers, Happy Father's Day. This is your day, and we are excited for you. Parenting has got to be one of the hardest and most rewarding jobs that God has ever given us. We often wonder and we question if we're doing it right. Did we miss anything? Is it too late to be the right parent? Is it, is it too late to, to get my child to learn what they need to learn? Am I even teaching everything that they need to do? You know, I get it. We've all been there. But we have an amazing God who has so graciously left us a guide on how to parent. To not only teach, but to guide our children. God is that perfect example of being that parent. And yes, we know that we're not perfect. But in his infinite wisdom, he fills the crevices that we miss. We give our 100% and allow the Lord to mold us and give us the wisdom that we need to give our children the gift of being taught and led. And that's exciting. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, it says, And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and, and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. And so if you're a dad watching today, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your investment. Thank you for the opportunity to allow God to work in your life and be a part of that. And so right now, I want to take a moment, and I just want to pray for you. Lord, you are an awesome God. And we are so thankful, God, that you're working in the lives of young men and elderly men. And God, we're so thankful that you have called them to be a dad, to be a world changer, to be a game changer, God. And, I, and I'm excited for that. And so, Lord, we pray that they, that, that they would know that they're not alone, that they can do that, God. And I just pray that everyone else that's watching today, God, I pray that you would be with them. Encourage them today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we would love to bless one of the dads that have joined us today online. And all you have to do is text the word dad to 712-217-2550. And, you, and we will send you a gift by just joining us today and being that first one that sends it in. We're excited about that. And you know, as we celebrate Father's Day, I'm reminded that sometimes we don't always say what we mean. One of our goals here at Central is to promote a healthy family. So ladies and kids, I want to give you a, a, a few uh, pointers on the translations that we give for your future benefit. When a man says, that's not what I meant, he means if something I said can be interpreted in two ways, and one of the ways makes you sad or angry, I mean the other one. When a man says, you look terrific, he means, oh, please don't try on one more outfit. We're going to be late and I'm hungry. When a man says it would take too long to explain, he means I have no idea how it works. And when a man says it's a guy thing, he means there's no rational thought pattern connected with this and you have no chance of making it logical. Number five says, when a man says, oh, don't fuss, I just cut myself, it's no big deal. He means I probably have severed a limb, I'm going to bleed to death, but before I admit it that I'm hurt, just get over here and help me. And finally, when a man says I'm lost, I know exactly where we are. What he's really saying is no one is ever going to see us alive again. You know, those, are, those are things that we have uh, as men that we go through. And, I, and I'm excited about what God's doing in our lives. And we can make fun of, of all the different things that us as men do. But today, today is a day that is special. Today is a day that we honor you. Pastor Ryan began a series last week on growing together. And this is what he said. Christianity is simply a series of next steps. 
I think we can understand that. <clears throat> if you're walking with Jesus, he's changing something in you, around you, and through you. And you will never become the person God wants you to be until you start serving. I want you to like and share that. I want you to make, you know, make sure that you're posting this. And, and next, I want to make sure that, what is it from the message last week that God just stirred in you? I know for me, it's one of the things it was, was just making sure that I'm reading the Bible, making sure that I'm staying on top of that. But I want to build off of that with a message called Whatever It Takes. If you look through Scripture, you notice the people of God uses, that the people of God uses. He never uses those who are talented. He never uses the ones who had it all together. He never goes through the perfect person. He always looks for people with issues. And I think he did that on purpose. He looked for the most important person that had an issue. And he said, let me use you. And I think today that we could probably raise our hand and say, use me. Because we're imperfect. And let me use the stutterer or the murderer, Moses. Let me use the guy who used to kill Christians like Paul, who, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. And now would, why would God choose an individual like an adulterer in King David? Why would he do that? He's trying to show you that no matter who you are or what your current resume is, he can use you to influence other people if you're allowing him into your life. To allow him into your life means that you want to know him. To know him is more than just Knowing Drew Brees or Tom Brady or the president, just to know them, right? We know of them. But to have a relationship with Jesus is more about knowing him, knowing him personally and knowing him with an with a authentic and genuine relationship. It's understanding that if, if we want to have God be with us, if we want God to work through us, that we have to allow him in. We have to know God in a personal way. And so I want to use Moses as an example. Because Moses had a, a horrible view of himself. If you know his story, he was raised Hebrew, but he was in the house of Pharaoh. When all that was discovered, he went into exile on the backside of the desert for 40 years. And of course, he had the whole burning bush encounter with God, which is pretty impressive. And that's where we want to pick up in the story in Exodus chapter 3. While tending his father-in-law, Jethro's sheep in the, in the land of Midian, Moses saw a baffling sight. He saw something on the, on the horizon, on Mount Horeb. A bush that was on fire, but it did not burn up. Moses went into that burning bush. He investigated, and he heard a voice of God calling out to him. How many of you would like to go and check that out? You know, those are, those are moments that we have. You know, when you go and you, you, know, you hear the fire... Uh, sirens and they're, they're taking off for a fire you know you I, I want to run out and and follow it and see what it is and see what it's all about and I'm sure Moses was intrigued about what was going on in a bush that didn't even that didn't even burn up but God's telling Moses he's having a conversation of how miserable his chosen people are the Hebrews that were in Egypt and they were being held as slaves and God had come down and he was beginning to prepare to rescue them. And so he, he picked Moses. He picked Moses to carry out that task. He says, Moses, I got, I got some big plans for you. Moses, you're going you're gonna to be the leader. You're going to bring all the Israelites out of Egypt. You know, that, that's incredible, right? I mean, that's a fantastic story. God's bringing a plan. He's bringing a rescue mission on Father's Day. A promotion. He's given Moses that promotion. And he's even throwing in some travel miles uh, just for the fun, just for fun. But what big plans does God have for you? Getting a promotion, relocation, and making a move. Maybe you're watching online today that you're in a new location because God's got some big plans for you. Maybe it's COVID 19 setbacks. Maybe you had some personal goals, some personal plans, and God has rechanged that because of the situation that you're in. And some new and great things are happening because of that. Maybe it's wrestling with, is it my plan or is it God's plan? 
in the midst of what God is doing in the supernatural, the extraordinary, Moses comes up with four excuses as to why this isn't a good idea. So I want you to check this video out. Who am I? Am I what I do? An artist? An accountant? A teacher? A mother? Or am I what I've achieved? An honor student? An MVP? A winner? Am I the things I've done right? Or am I defined by the things I've done wrong? Am I a saint? A sinner? What about what others think of me? Am I all of these things? None of these things? Who am I? How I identify myself determines how I approach life. If I am what I do, I'll always need to do more and achieve more to find my value. If I am what others say, I'll always try to please people instead of my Heavenly Father. But if I listen to who God says I am and embrace His identity in me, I'll find the freedom to live out all He has planned for me. God calls me His child. He says I am wise and restored, that I'm a brand new creation in Christ. I am chosen and holy and blameless before God. He calls me His masterpiece. I am loved by God. He says I am made complete through the grace and mercy of Jesus, my Savior. And when I see myself the way God sees me, I walk with confidence because I trust the one who answers the question, who am I? You know, those are, those are moments that we have to understand that you are chosen. And Moses was chosen, but he has excuses. And if you're taking notes today, I want you to, take, I want you to, to, to write down, who am I? In Exodus chapter 3, verse 11, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to the Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? I think Moses was probably saying, God, you got the wrong idea. You got the wrong guy. And when God is calling us to take our next steps, that's when those insecurities start to kick in. That's when rejection, failure, not qualified. Who am I? Who am I to be? Maybe you're to be a, a group leader, a life group leader. Maybe you're supposed to be in a, in a life group or to serve on the dream team. Maybe God's been impressing on you to uh, start a jail ministry, open a business, change careers. How can I be a parent to a child that is sick, who has needs? Or maybe... God, how can I be a parent to that kid that just makes me want to pull my hair out every day? How do I do that, right? Who am I? But God gives us a key phrase that we can hold on to today. And he says, I will be with you. God always has an execution, an execution plan when he asks you to go, and that is to grow. As we're going through our Grow series I want us to know that he wants us to go, but God's given us an execution plan. He's given us ways to be prepared so that we may be able to grow. Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord, plans for the welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. And so exchanging our viewpoint for God's perspective is essential to winning our battles. Exchanging our viewpoint. We see in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, it says, Now that I have already obtained all of this, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straying toward what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Exchanging our viewpoint. We see here that that. I'm attaining, we see that they're, they're, I'm moving forward, but we have to be able to take our viewpoint, the things that we think, and then we have to get into God's word, and we have to realize that it's God's perspective that's essential to winning our battles. When we try to do it alone, it's not going to work. And it's that perspective that's going to change our view and our attitudes. There's so many times that we have a, a particular attitude, we have a view of something. 
Maybe it's out of anger. Maybe it's out of spite. Maybe it's situations that we're dealing with. And we have a view of how we're, how we're going to attack this in our life. And the enemy just comes in and is just destroying it. Because it's our view. But when we begin to get God's perspective, we can begin to see that we can take back the territory that, that, that the enemy has taken and that we can have victory. There are days that I don't feel qualified. There are days where I ask and I say, God, who am I? Having three children, being in ministry, there's so many things, and you're in that same boat. There's so many things that you're saying, who am I? But we can learn to trust that God has called you and that he has a plan just for you. Those are, that's a trust issue. We, we have to trust God that he has a plan and he's calling us to that. And so we don't measure ourselves by the doubt, by the lies, the uncertainty of what we see, but rather we measure ourselves through God's eyes. All through Scripture, God gives us the hope that we are. In Ephesians chapter 2, for we are God's handiwork. God has created you. Man, isn't that awesome to know that God's created you? Maybe you're in a place today and, and, and you, don't, you don't have hope. God has created you. Matthew chapter 5, it says, you are the light of the world. You are the light that God has created, that you are a child of God. In Romans chapter 8, it says, you are more than conquerors, that you can do this. You are more than conquerors. But you see, we can't look through our lens because our lens becomes cloudy. And it becomes, uh, we become distracted. And we can't see what God is doing. So we can't look through the lens of, of seeing ourselves. We've got to look through the lens of how God sees us the second excuse moses says is in the text of exodus chapter 4 and moses says what if they what if they do not believe me or listen to me and say the lord did not appear to you and dads i can guarantee you you're in this place you're watching us online that dads i guarantee that your son or daughter has been there your son or daughter says but dad what if they laugh at me Dad, what if I'm rejected? What if they leave? What if my friends mock me? What if? The questions. And dads and, and moms, I mean, we're in that boat with our kids. We've been there. And honestly, we've all had moments of what if. But keeping ourselves from God's best for our life because we're more concerned with what people are thinking than what God does. And so let me try to make this as practically, uh, practical as I can. I love to pray for meals. I love to pray when we go out to eat, or we're at home, or at school, or anywhere that I'm, I love to pray for meals. But it's not for a show. It's not just so that I can let people know that I can pray. I love to pray for a meal because I want to be authentic. I want to be thankful that God has blessed me for the opportunity to eat. To, that God blessed me with a family or with friends that were able to go out to eat. I want to I wanna thank him for that. But it can also become fake. It can also become unimportant. Because you're thinking of what other people are going to think. Raising your hands in church, in worship. I remember as I was a young kid and, and a young man, and I was in a youth gathering, and there were some things that, it was, as we were worshiping God, and, and uh, it was non-denominational, and so I, the, the question was, as God was stirring in my heart, was, God, what are people going to think if I raise my hands in worship? What are people going to think if, if I do the, the abnormal of what was going on in that service? And so I, as, as I was wrestling with that, I finally came to the place and said, God, it's not, about, it's not about me. It's not about the people that are in this place. It's about you. And I want to worship you. You see, we can't live in fear of what everybody else thinks about us. Our daily lives, our relationships, and our passions should be a reflection of what God is doing in our lives. That's, that's the, the guiding point for us to do. In Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25, it says, The fear of man will prove to be a snare, but those who trust the Lord will be kept safe. Will be kept safe. The third excuse that 
he uses is in uh, Exodus chapter 4, verse 10. Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord, I have never. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. I have never been able to do the things that you're asking for me to do. How many of us have been in that place? I have never. Those are, those are moments that we have. For me, I have never, I remember the first time that I, that I led somebody to the Lord. I'd never done that before. We just came back from camp and a bunch of the kids that were doing it and, and uh, God was rocking our lives. And, and you know, it's good to have community. It's good to have people in your life that, that, that push you to get closer to God. And so we decided, hey, we're going to go door to door and we're going to talk to people about Jesus and see if we can share our faith. And so we we started walking, of course, the first house right next to the church. We, we thought, well, this would be a good one, right? They should know what's going on. It'll be easy for us. We knocked on the door, and a lady opened up the door, and, and we talked to her and shared a little bit, and she invited us in. And as each one of us shared our story, she accepted Jesus Christ as her personal Savior. It was awesome. But I had never done that before. And I could have lived in fear. I could have lived in the what ifs. I could have lived in... Who am I, God, that I can lead somebody to the Lord? And so when we're asked by him to do something that we've never done before, I'll tell you something. God is famous. God is famous for calling us to do something that we have never done because he wants us to be required to take a leap of faith. Here at Central, it's you, it's us, it's me, it's our church family that has taken some leaps of faith over the last year or so, starting the campus here in Creston. Creston, it's great to have you. Man, we are excited that God is going to do miracles in your community. It's not because of us, it's because of him, but we took a step of faith that said, God, use, use us in Creston. Saturday night services, that is powerful. We believe that God's doing something powerfully in Saturday night, and we wanted to, to have a, a, a way to connect with people that wanted to serve God and worship God on Saturday nights. Online services, you know, we've always done that, right? But through the COVID-19 situation and, and all the things that are going on, we have, we have taken a, a step to make our online services more impactful, more, more on purpose, so that you would have the opportunity to be a difference maker in your life. 712 Youth Center. Man, it's, it's, an, it's, it's awesome. We've moved into a new location. God's doing some great things. It was a step of faith to do that, to buy a building to do the things that were there because we want to invest in our young people. The dog park, just right over here, we took a step of faith and we said, hey, you know what? There are people out there that have animals that, that want to have a place that they could call their home, the place where they can walk their dog and have a, an opportunity just to enjoy the beauty of God and being outside. And so we took a step of faith in that. We have tons of people behind the scenes that are doing ministry, that are stepping out of faith and doing things that maybe not, aren't necessarily comfortable for them. And they're saying, I have never. Our captains that, that are part of our Connect team every week, man, it's awesome. I'll give a quick shout out to um, uh, Aaron and Tony Robbins. Man, they, they, they have sacrificed their Saturday nights to in order to, be, to serve and to be a part of what God's doing on Saturday nights. But God gives us an opportunity to pioneer something. Is that awesome? He's given us the opportunity to pioneer something, to start something, to be the first. Maybe the first in your family. Maybe the first in your, in your family group or the first in your friends group. But you have an opportunity to pioneer something. Having that opportunity as in my own life, like many of you that have had uh, to take on a new job and decide, is that really where I need to go? Uh, when we came to Carroll, that was a step of faith um, and, and to, to allow God to work in uh, what he was doing in our lives. Our daughter has diabetes, and, and a step of faith for us was uh, letting her go to school. Because honestly, uh, we were still concerned on, what, on how we should do it. Uh, we didn't know if we wanted someone else to do it. And that was a step of faith for us. Um, and there's so many other things that we have that that's our steps of faith, that we have to take that leap. A leap of faith is bigger. I want to make sure that we understand this. A, a leap of faith is bigger than anything that you can do on your own. If you are able to do something, 
Because of your gifts and your talents. It's not a leap of faith. You may be pressed a little bit more maybe. But a leap of faith is when you can't do it on your own. And it puts emphasis on God because you want to be able to fall on your knees and you want to spend time with God. And I believe that this week, (laughs) um, as, as I prepared for this message, that resonated more to me this week than probably any sermon that I've done yet. Because I, mean, I, had, I had knots and, and, and I needed a breakthrough. I wanted God to, to share with me and, and prayer in every moment was prayer because I wanted God, God's help to do what he's called us to do. So God is notorious for asking us to do something that we've never done before. And what is it that you've done that God's told you to do? You know, you know just make, put a like button there, share it on, let us know. But God is notorious for helping us and giving us the point where we have to prepare and we have to be dependent on him. It's so important. And so I can let the fear that I've never done this stop me from what God has called in order for me to follow my destiny. I can let the fear that I've never done this stop me from what God has called me to have my destiny. You are destined to do great things. God has a plan for you. And it's exciting as we see that unfold, as we allow him to work in our lives and not fear to hold us back. And then in Exodus chapter 4, verse 13, Moses says one more excuse, he has one more excuse up his sleeve to not have to do what God has called him to do. Moses said, suppose, suppose, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of the fathers has sent me to you. And then they ask me, what is his name? What should I tell them? I want you to write down reluctance in your notes, reluctance, because I'm convinced that there are some of you today that are at that spot, because you believe that God is done with you. Not that you have stepped away and you're done with that particular piece in your life and and God's moving you in a new direction. I'm saying that you're at that spot where you said, God, I'm done. I'm done serving, I'm done done living, I, I just, I don't know if I can take another step. And we become reluctant because maybe the hurt that's in our life, maybe the, the challenges that we're facing, and we're, we're reluctant to allow God to work in our lives. And we finally get to the place where we just say, just go ahead and use somebody else. We're reluctant. I want to convince you today that your life will never make sense. You will never make sense until you do, are doing something in your life that really is making a difference for God. We have to understand that until we are doing the things that God wants us to do, we'll never really find the purpose that we're looking for. And as hard as that is sometimes, because, you know, we fight through all the excuses, right? We, we're, we're taking our next steps. We're, we're, those things are getting rooted into our lives we're being an example to our family and our friends and how awesome God is. And, we, and all of those things is awesome. We're taking those positive steps forward. And God's working in our lives. But we also have to be aware of what the enemy is conspiring to do to keep you from growing deeper. And that is that he is going to do whatever he can to keep you from the call that is on your life. The purpose that's on your life. The influence that's on your life. By two things. He will give you a lot of stuff and make that a distraction, or he'll give you a lot of problems and make that a distraction. It will either be possessions or it will be problems. And for some, we have so many things, so many toys to play with, so many dreams, that we won't even want to do anything that's significant for God because the devil has convinced us that all of those things are from God. And so it's okay for us to spend all that time away from God. For others, it's the opposite. They say, I can't do anything because I have so many problems, I have to fix that first. And I think we probably have all been there, right? But both of those are not about those things. Both of those are, th- are about things that the enemy tries to put in your way to keep you from serving God. Heaven's coming. You know, and that's one of the promises that we stand on, that Jesus Christ is going to return. And in heaven... There will be pleasures 
And there will be possessions. And there will be rewards. And so, yes, on this earth, we have the opportunity to be blessed. And we have the opportunity to be a part of multiple different things that God's given us. But we cannot allow those things to control us. We cannot be enamored by those things. Because we are here for one reason, and one reason only. And that is to serve God. We are here to serve God, to give Him that opportunity. That is why He created us. That is why He has uniquely wired us to do the things that we do, is to serve Him. And that is something that I believe that God has for us today. That whatever it takes, whatever it takes to be able to serve Him, whatever it takes to get our lives back on track, to get, to get our lives back in the place that we have purpose. And there are four excuses that Moses used that could become a stumbling block and keep us from seeing that everything God has in store for us. The first one is who am I? Don't measure yourself by doubt, lies, or uncertainty. Measure yourself by how God sees you. Number two, what if they? What if they? We can't live in fear and everybody thinks about it and, and live in fear of what everybody else thinks about us. I have never. You won't know until you jump. You won't know until you jump. It's taking that step of faith because that is bigger than anything that you can do on your own because it puts emphasis on God as you pray to him. And fourthly, being reluctant. I want to convince you today that you'll never make sense until you're doing something in your life that really makes a difference for God. And so I want to encourage you to take that step of faith. That's what, that's what it, we're here for, is to take that step of faith and realize that there's purpose, leadership, and influence on the inside of you. And as you push that out, it's going to blow your mind. I'm a firm believer that as we allow God to work in our lives, as we have a life of transformation, as we continue to work with him, a year from now, a month from now, whatever point that we have that breakthrough, we will look back and we'll, and we'll go, wow, God is good. Because we took a path and we followed him. And we begin to make that godly influence in people's lives. And once you live it out, you'll find the ways that God has always intended for you to live your life. God has a plan. But how do I prepare? How do I prepare for what God has for me? The first and most important part is as we realize that if I don't know Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, our whole life is about finding Him. The the famous scripture verse of John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God is pursuing you. He knows where you're at. He knows your frustrations. He knows your hurts. And today God wants you to be able to recognize that he's right beside you. That he's wanting to, to wrap his arms around you and to hold you and to care for you if you'll just allow him in. But once you find Jesus, once you have that relationship with Jesus, your whole life changes. Your whole life changes from the need of, of knowing that purpose to making a difference. And that is exciting to know that, that today, on Father's Day, that you can begin to realize that God's given you a purpose a drive to go towards him. The second thing that we have is to pray. Prayer is the fuel that ignites the doorway of potential. It is power. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, it says, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions, always with all kinds of prayers and requests, with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray. I want you to understand that prayer is the power that we need to prepare for what God has for us. And last is to be part of a life group. I hope that you're part of a community and that you're not living in isolation because being a part of a life group, to be part of a community is so important because when you're in isolation, the enemy can come that we're vulnerable for the enemy. 
I hope that prayer is part of that group. I hope that prayer is part of your life because when we pray together, when we pray together, strongholds are broken, chains are broken, and lives are transformed because of the power of God that we, that we align ourselves with God. And so I believe that today that God has that, that purpose and that plan for you. And I'm encouraged by that. And today as we close, whatever it takes, whatever it takes to get myself aligned with where God wants me to do, let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for what you're doing here today. That God, from, the, from, from every person, for every internet connection, for those that are in Creston today, God, I pray that there will be breakthroughs. That there will be strongholds that will be broken. That excuses will be changed. That lives will be transformed. For families to be restored. For fathers to begin to realize that there is purpose in their lives. That they can do it. That they can become the leader of their house. Marriages will be reconciled. That God, that you would do great things for sins to be forgiven. And if we're here today, if you're listening today and you're at that place that you want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the first step, I want you to pray this prayer. Dear God, I realize I am a sinner. And I could reach heaven that I could never reach heaven on my own. And right now I place my faith in Jesus Christ as God's son who died for my sins and rose from the dead to give me eternal life. Please forgive me of my sins and help me to live for you, God. Thank you for accepting me. Thank you for giving me eternal life. Thank you for giving me hope. In Jesus' name, amen. And I, and I am excited, excited for you. you. We, we want, want to know, know your story. story. That, 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 that is one of the greatest things that we have. So we want to get to know your story. The first of all, if you accepted Jesus Christ today, I want you to text BELIEVE at 712-217-2550. We want to know that because we want to come alongside of you and be a part of your story. Maybe you're here today and God just rocked your life and, and, and there's some things going on. We had a guy come into church last week that needed prayer. If you need prayer today just text the word prayer to that number and we want to partner with you in that and believe with you for a miracle maybe your next step is baptism and what a great way it is to take your next step and to show the world that god i'm ready i'm ready for that next step and so maybe you want to be baptized just type just text uh, baptism and we want to be a part of that but most importantly i guess as we as we conclude the day i want to say dads it's not just your day but you have something special because you're a dad. Don't let, it, don't let it slide. Take ownership of that and be a part. And so if you're a dad today, be that first one to text dad at 712-217-2550 and we will bless you with a gift. God loves you. We love you. I'm excited to see you one day on our campus or at Creston. Uh, be a part in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Have a great week.